Last year, Tesla held its first ever Investor Day, at which it detailed some of the progress that it had been making on semi-autonomous and fully autonomous vehicle operation. It was at that event that Elon Musk showcased a Tesla Model 3 driving a regular commute without any human input. And it was at that event that Elon unveiled his plans for Tesla RoboTaxi, allowing Tesla owners to make extra money off their cars when they weren't driving them by allowing their cars to be part of Tesla's planned RoboTaxi fleet. We haven't seen the RoboTaxi fleet yet, but today, after months of waiting and delays caused by COVID-19, Tesla held its second ever Investor Day. And as I'm sure most of you know, today it focused on Tesla's brand new battery technology, laid out details of how Tesla plans to dramatically slash the cost of producing cells and also production to make electric cars and energy storage products more affordable for everyone. Let's recap what we learned, explain what that means for Tesla and the electric auto industry as a whole, and tentatively look at how long it's going to be before we have to wait to see any of these things in production vehicles. And as a quick disclaimer, I've done my best to get everything 100% correct, but I was writing this script while listening to the presentation live. So if I've screwed up something, please let me know below. The presentation, coming after a short break at the end of Tesla's annual shareholder meeting, which I won't actually cover much in this video, started by reiterating the severity of the climate crisis that we find ourselves in today, and noting that we all need to do more to make the transition to cleaner, greener fuels and energy happen a lot quicker. On stage, Tesla CEO Elon Musk and Drew Baglino, Tesla's senior VP of energy. In order to transition away from fossil fuels at a fast enough rate to make a difference, Elon reiterated Tesla's needs to execute a 100 times growth in terms of battery production, achieving 10 terawatt hours of battery production per year in order to help transition a global fleet to electric vehicles. 150 terawatt hours should be, we're told, enough to transition all vehicles on Earth to electric. Next, we heard about Tesla's goals to halve the costs of producing batteries today, including everything from battery production improvements to actually integrating batteries as structural elements in vehicles. At the top of this, Elon and Drew covered some of the improvements made in cell design over the years. That's physical cell design, noting that the larger a cylindrical cell, the lower the cost to produce. This morphed into the discussion of the tabless cell, the 4680, that Tesla is building. A battery that's 46 millimeters across and 80 millimeters long. It has five times the energy density of the 2170 cells currently used by Tesla, offers 16% more range, and has six times the power density, just from mechanical changes alone in the cells. And this reduces battery costs by 14% per kilowatt hour. But there was more. After this, we were taught about how Tesla plans to revolutionize its battery cell production process by re-examining every stage. Instead of using the wet electrode coating process normally used with lithium ion batteries, which is a costly and chemically intensive process, both men detailed the progress that Tesla has made in dry electrode production, something it's inherited from Maxwell Technologies when it acquired the firm last year, but which Tesla has taken and revised many times to bring it to initial test production today. By converting from wet electrode production to dry electrode production, something Elon Musk said is, quote, close to working. It does work, but with not a high yield. There's a 10 times improvement in savings to be made. I could make an entire video on the switch from wet to dry electrodes, but for brevity, we're going on to manufacturing line and production rates detailing a fully automated robotic production line that can operate at a far higher speed than today's systems, with vertical integration resulting in one long, seamless production line that's essentially one giant machine, Tesla is claiming a seven times improvement in production throughput based on Gigafactory today. All of this, combined with an improvement in the way that cells are charged and tested at the factory, charging them en masse rather than individually, just as they are when they are assembled in a car or an energy storage battery pack, Tesla is now predicting it can reach terawatt hour status in its factories using far less space than its current 150 gigawatt hour facility in Reno. Tesla says it hopes to ramp up its own battery cell production to reach 100 gigawatt hours of capacity by 2022, expanding that onwards to three terawatt hours of production by 2030. This is in addition to all of the cells it currently buys in from Cattle, Panasonic, and its other battery providers, 
and it will continue to purchase them. After hearing about the production line, we were talked about Tesla's advancements at the cell chemistry level. Highlighting silicon as a great material due to its abundance, Elon outlined raw silicon could be stabilized through an iron conducting polymer coating to become an anode in a future Tesla cell. Again, I'm hopeful that we can cover this at depth in the future to expand on this new proposed cell chemistry. So let me know if you'd like to do that. This new anode represents a 20% improvement in range. But at the other end of the battery, Tesla talked about its plans for a new cathode design with this brand new cell, using nickel in its vehicle batteries to reduce the battery costs even further per kilowatt hour. Interestingly though, Tesla is now proposing different chemical compositions for its various different batteries and applications. Heavier on nickel, for example, for Tesla semi batteries, but then using nickel combined with other metals for other applications. Utilizing the raw nickel metal powder rather than using intermediate production, Tesla now says it has a massive reduction in supply chain resources, thus saving more money, and plans on setting up its own cathode production facility in the US. Talking of which, Tesla's new goal is to source all of its raw materials for its battery cells in the US. In fact, Elon Musk noted that there's enough lithium in Nevada alone to convert the whole US fleet to electric transportation. Tesla says it can use saline extraction rather than acid extraction, and this makes it possible to extract lithium from clay without causing major environmental problems. Finally, though, when enough cells are being recycled, the ultimate goal is to reach a point where Tesla will not need to obtain raw materials to continue producing cells. Instead, it will just recycle them from old batteries. So far, then, we're looking at a 49% price reduction per kilowatt hour. But as Elon Musk detailed, there was one final cost reduction to be made, that of vehicle production. Highlighting the Model Y Giga casting system, which has allowed Tesla to use 79 fewer parts by casting the entire rear of the Model Y with one giant casting machine. This led Tesla to a new goal, using casting and structural batteries together to simplify the construction process. Structural battery packs aren't completely new. Other automakers have looked into using battery packs as structural elements. Currently, Tesla uses a filler that is a flame retardant in its battery packs, but it wants to change that flame retardant filler to one that can also be a structural element capable of transferring loads. This, hand in hands with the casting system, means that more cells can be packed into the car's structure, and the car's structure will improve. In total, there's a 10% mass reduction, 370 fewer parts, and 14% potential increase in range from just eliminating the separate battery pack and making it a structural battery pack instead. And by removing all of those extra parts by switching to structural batteries, well, there's a 35% reduction in factory floor space, which means the vehicles can be made faster and they're more easy to make. Altogether, we're left with a 56% reduction in cost per kilowatt hour for Tesla's new battery cells. And that adds up. Tesla claims a 54% potential range increase from implementing all of these changes. And that means a 69% reduction in costs needed per gigawatt hour of cell production. Yes, Elon's sexy jokes are continuing. 69. All of the teens in the room can laugh now. But in order to bring this all about, Elon cautioned that it would take between 18 months and three years before Tesla would be able to implement all of these savings and technical improvements for a production vehicle. So what does this mean for the future? Drew and Elon laid out the possibility of a future Tesla model with Tesla performance and range capable of being produced and sold for less than 25,000 US dollars. There is no name for that vehicle and it would be at least three years away, which I should note is further out than the original promise Musk had made several years ago when he said a $25,000 car was more readily achievable than today's event even suggests. With the battery production out of the way, Musk turned his attention to the Tesla Model S Plaid, which was showcased through a video on screen. It recently managed a 1 minute 30.3 second lap time at the WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca, and it promises a range in excess of 520 miles per charge, a 200 mile per hour top speed, 1100 horsepower, 
three motors and a zero to 60 sprint time of less than two seconds. Elon said that the Plaid Model S will be available to order now for delivery next year. After the battery day presentation, some of the rest of Tesla's engineering team came on stage to answer questions from the audience. The audience was basically shareholders who were there for the shareholder meeting, who, by the way, were all parked up in their Teslas in neat little rows. It was very cute. I won't go into all of the questions asked, but there were some interesting snippets. Musk confirmed that Cybertruck is going to be an American-only vehicle. I'll caveat that here, that it wasn't clear from how I heard it whether it was North America or just the US. Musk did hint a smaller, more, quote, Wolverine version of Cybertruck might be produced outside of the US for outside of the US markets. Given that Tesla has more than 600,000 reservations for Cybertruck, though, Elon didn't seem all that worried about Cybertruck being a US-only vehicle. And as he rightly pointed out, the US has the biggest pickup truck market in the world. Talking about V2G, Musk reiterated that he isn't really a big fan of it, but it's certainly possible, maybe for Europe, in the future. He also reiterated that he felt it was better to have a separate battery storage system for people's homes rather than rely on their cars in V2G. Musk noted that the original Roadster, quote, had V2G, but nobody used it. I wasn't actually aware of this, but I do know plenty of people who would love to have V2G in their cars. As I'm eager to get this video out, I am going to stop there with Battery Day. And once I've had a chance to digest things further, I'm hoping that we can produce some more in-depth analysis of the various technology laid out and ask how realistic it is that we'll see them in the marketplace. As to the shareholder meeting, while Battery Day was certainly great to watch, assuming Tesla can deliver on all of these technologies, and let's be clear, Elon did say that there are still some major hurdles to be overcome, the shareholder meeting had a less of a positive vibe for me personally. Why? Two proposals, which I hoped would get voted in favour of, didn't. The first, Proposal 6, called on Tesla to produce a report on the impact of the use of mandatory arbitration at Tesla and the impact of Tesla's policies on its workers' ability to seek redress in relation to cases of harassment and discrimination in the workplace. Tesla actually recommended against this proposal and the vote went in its favour. The second, Proposal 7 called on Tesla to prepare additional reporting on human rights and human rights violations at its facilities and in its supply chain, essentially asking Tesla to do more than it currently does in its sustainability report to ensure any materials are free from slave or child labour origins. While some of the developments of Battery Day will ultimately end any concerns in this, as Tesla is looking to go cobalt-free and to source all of its materials in the US, it did recommend against voting for this proposal, and the vote went in Tesla's favour. Although Tesla already does a great deal of sustainability reporting, one of the suggestions in this proposal was that instead of just relying on paper trails, Tesla became more active in engaging in regular checks at the various mines that it uses, maybe even flying drones over to make sure that there were no violations. As with any company, the responsibility to shareholders is pretty important, but I had hoped that on these two matters, Tesla would have been a leader more, as it does with the energy and the transportation sector in many ways. So that's it. That's your 50,000 foot or 50,000 meter view. I hope it's helpful. And as I say, keep your eyes peeled for more from Battery Day very soon. As always, thanks to the folks on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month Patreon supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month Patreon supporters, John Lyons, Ray Jean Fellows and Jeffrey Songster. And our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, JP Fagerback and Sean Udea. You can join all of these Patreon supporters and become one yourself by following the links below, or you can find out how to send us a donation through Ko-fi or Bitcoin. Below, you'll also find a link to our free Discord server, which costs nothing. So sign up and come and join in the fun. Chat to the team and other fans. And don't forget to check out our new t-shirts and other merch just in time for Halloween, like the one I'm wearing. After the names have scrolled, you're going to see a suggestion for a new video to watch from the channel. So please consider watching. If you haven't, and I'll be back very soon. Thanks for joining me, and as always, keep evolving.